Good afternoon. Um, I'll use this. My name is David Sakota. I'm the Marine Law Fellow with the Department of Land and Natural Resources Division of Aquatic Resources. Also a proud graduate of this law school, um, class of 2010. Um, I've been with DLNR for about three years. Um, before that, I was clerking for Judge Gary Chang at the First Circuit Court. Um, so we've heard a lot about uh, Hawaii's environmental court, what's been going on the last year or so, um, the new tools that it's being given with this new legislation. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about another tool. Um, it's actually an alternative to the criminal district court system. Uh, it's called the Civil Resource Violation System, or CRVS. Um, and basically what the intent of this system is, is to divert low impact environmental cases away from the criminal district court system and alternatively, they will be handled in-house by DLNR um, administratively. So uh, before I talk about what this system is, I'm just gonna give a hypothetical example of a low impact case um, and how it would proceed through the district court system presently. Uh, and then I'll talk about CRVS and then compare the two systems. So for a hypothetical, We'll just take John Doe, we'll call him JD for short, and he's visiting from the mainland. You know, he hears about this sport of spearfishing and he wants to give it a shot. So he goes to the store and buys some equipment. He looks online to find out what kind of fish are edible or good eating, and he jumps in the water and swims around. And, you know, he's in Waikiki, so he doesn't see much fish, but he does see some manini. Uh, convict tang, it's the white fish with the vertical black stripes. Um, and a lot of you might recognize the term manini because it's kind of local slang for small or insignificant. Um, and if you actually see a manini, they don't get much bigger than your hand size. And so relatively speaking, they're pretty insignificant uh, when you consider the total amount of fish in the ocean. Anyways, JD goes and spears a few small manini, um, not really knowing the regulations. You know, he's proud, he has dinner walking up the beach and there's a doe care officer waiting for him. And the doe care officer notices that he has some regulated species because manini under state law have a minimum size limit of five inches. And so the doe care officer proceeds to measure his catch and determines that all of his fish are just shy of five inches. So the officer writes him a ticket, hands it to JD and says, you have to show up for this court date. So fast forward, JD has to buy a plane to get back to Hawaii, show up for his court date. And you know he's hoping to just deal with it, um, pay the fine, get it over with. But when he shows up to court, the judge tells him that it's a petty misdemeanor and uh, it's also $100 mandatory for a first offense. Um, but because it's a criminal penalty, he really needs to talk to a public defender or an attorney because there's rights that he might give up by just pleading out. So the judge tells him to contact the PD and reschedules for another hearing. So. JD has to come back to Hawaii another time for another hearing. And you know, fast forward to this second hearing, best case scenario, uh, all the parties are there, PD, prosecutor, the defendant, uh, the doe care officer as a witness, and best case scenario, uh, they reach a plea deal and the case is done. But um, for the purposes of this hypo, uh, perhaps, the prosecutor is not ready to go to trial or reach a plea deal. Or uh, perhaps the defense attorney finds some flaws in how the evidence was handled and wants to file a motion to suppress evidence. So the judge um, sets some motions deadlines and schedules a motion on the hearings, a pretrial motion on the, on the um, pretrial hearing on the motions. And so they have to come back a third time for that pretrial hearing 
again, all parties are there. And perhaps the judge does suppress some of the evidence, but there's still enough left to go forward with trial. They have to come back a fourth time for the trial. And at this point, you know, it doesn't really matter if they go to trial or if, you know, the case settles or if he pleads out at that point. Uh, there's been so much resources expended. You have to think of um, the court time, the judge's time, um, the airfare for the defendant to fly back to Hawaii uh, at least two times, sometimes up to four times. And the officer, the do care officer who's the witness who wrote him the ticket has to be there in court ready to go to trial each time. So that's pulling him out of the field. He's not doing uh, enforcement, he's sitting in court. Um, so when you consider all of these things, um, is it worth it for a Manini violation? So what is the alternative? Um, and that's where CRVS comes into play. And I'll quickly go through it. Um, instead of a criminal citation, the officer issues a civil citation. And on it, it tells the respondent that he must respond within 21 days or face higher fines. And the fine is written on the citation. Uh, and he has three options. He can either admit and pay. So this is great in the case if JD is on the mainland, he can just write a check, say admit, and send a check to, uh, to DLNR. Second option, admit, but request a mitigation of the fine, or contest the citation, uh, request a hearing. So with these options, it keeps the case out of the district court. Uh, the defendant or respondent doesn't have to go to court. Um, and so what are the benefits of using this system for uh, low impact cases? Uh, first of all, it's an additional enforcement tool for do care officers doesn't fully replace criminal tickets. It just adds another tool. Um, one big bonus for the defendant is it will not give him a criminal record. Uh, this is important, especially uh, for you know certain occupations, military or say law students, where <laughs> you know a criminal mark on your record um, might. Uh, might prohibit you from sitting for the bar or you know, getting promoted in a certain job. So that's a big consideration. It reduces burdens on the courts, as I've discussed. Um, there's a lower evidentiary burden of proof under um, the civil side, um, preponderance of the evidence versus beyond a reasonable doubt. Monetary fines collected by the agency stay within DLNR and can be funneled back towards enforcement rather than in district court, they go to the general fund. And finally, administrative fines will be more closely tied to the value of the resource, leading to more consistent imposition of penalties. And I have to say, though, that these last two are being done uh, now that we have an environmental court and we have judges and prosecutors who are becoming more familiar with the importance of our natural resource laws, um, so they are able to give more consistent uh, penalties. Um, I think that's all that I have to say. Um, well, sorry, one more thing about uh, the implementation of it. I know I'm past my time, but um, there's a lot of considerations that DLNR has to take into account in implementing CRVS because yes, we are taking a burden off of the court, but um, we'll be putting that burden on the administration. So uh, we'll have to develop the civil citation forms. Uh, we'll have to train officers in how to use them. We may have to hire new staff, such as hearings officers. Um, and so I've been working with John Foster, the Doe Care Fellow, um, to possibly pilot the program um, for um, maybe one area or for a period of time, just to see what the administrative burden looks like. And we hope to roll it out, uh, you know, maybe within the next year or so. Um, but that's the status of it now. <laughs>